Hi, this is Megan Keen with Avid Artist Relations here in Austin, Texas for South by Southwest 2011. And I'm here with Joe Munga, director of Viva Riva, which is in the South by Global portion of the film festival. So Joe, tell us a little bit about the concept behind the film. Uh, the film is a gangster movie. It's the story of a guy who comes back to his hometown Kinshasa after many years. He has a lot of money and uh, he meets a beautiful woman, but they're also gangsters, like shooting. It's a genre film. It's really a noir film, I would say. And so so how did you come up with the concept for this film? Uh, but the idea for me, I wanted to talk about my hometown Kinshasa, but I wanted to find a way where it could be uh, easy to relate to the city and also could be a good entertainment. That's why I came to that concept of a genre film, because mm -hmm. you can also talk about the social content, about, uh, you know, we you know that Africa has issues and it's, it's difficult sometimes. But also, I could also portray the town, the characters, you know, and maybe try to get a good, good entertainment. That was the idea. And so you, you shot in your hometown. How, how technically was the production set up? Uh, what camera were you using, all of that? I mean, for the people who do not know Kinshasa, it's like, uh, Kinshasa is the capital of, of Congo, which is like uh, in the middle of Africa. It's quite a difficult country in the sense that it's really poor and uh, we don't have a lot of infrastructure. But at the same time, you have a good energy, good people. So technically, when you think about the feature film and uh, you think first that I'm going to shoot in, with the film, and, but at the same time, you, there is no lab, so you need to send right. uh, the, the film to, the la uh, to Europe or maybe South Africa, which makes it complicated with customs and all these things. Mm -hmm. And after that, we think about um, digital. So you think about maybe shooting with the red, but also red is a technology, I mean, I'm not an expert, huh? but I will <laughs> say <laughs> works better or easier in a Western country where like, we have an infrastructure. So with all this question, I came up finally to find the D5. Okay, we took the steel camera mm -hmm. and the first generation before the D7. Mm -hmm. And then we said, I mean, it was great for the, the light and uh, it was also really sharp in terms of the image. And it was really, I will say, light for the, the, the process by itself, you know, you film, you have the chip, you put it in your, in your computer, so it was perfect. And we shot with the, with the D5 and we had uh, incredible footages, you know, with it. And so is this the first time that you've had an all digital workflow? I mean, on that level, that's my first feature film, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and also it was like quite an experience because at the time the D7 didn't exist, so we didn't really know if it could work. And especially for like a, for a feature film when we shoot like for like 38 days, right. you know, seven weeks or eight yeah, weeks. Yeah. So it was an experience, but it, it did, it worked really well for us. Really. And I, I know that you guys did your post-production uh, with Avid Media Composer. Um, what was your working relationship with your editor like? I changed four times editor, <laughs> which gives you like a... <laughs> I, I don't think I'm a difficult person, but I, um, I mean, when you make a film, it's, you, you never know where the problems come from, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes it's the shooting, sometimes it's the production, and all that went really smooth, and so I was felt, I felt comfortable when I got into the um, editing room, but for some reason, I, I couldn't find um, the magic in the film, mm -hmm. okay, so I had one editor, and then I changed another one, and then I took a third one, and then when I was desperate, I, um, I uh, asked to, uh, the assistant director, who was a Canadian, Pierre Mani, find me an editor. <laughs> and then uh, he proposed me um, a fantastic man, okay? uh, Yves Langlois, which is a Canadian editor, who worked in the US for a while and works also in Canada, but works also in Europe. And you know, you have that guy who's like 60 or 65, who, who cut so many films, and, and he says, okay, a film about Kinshasa and Lingala, I say, why not? So he came in, I didn't give him the script, so he was like discovering the material and started like editing the film with what he was seeing, and it was fantastic. You know, that was really the moment where I could um, meet the film that I wrote. Okay, and, and, and also because it's so good, the guy, it was really inspired, and I, f I felt the energy okay, that I, tr I was trying to put in the film, and then the, the editing went very well. And I mean, Yves Langlois is, is a fantastic guy, and, uh, and he has now, he was nominated to the African Movie Awards oh, wow. for best, yeah, for best editor. I mean, the film got 12 nominations. Oh, congratulations, that's wonderful. And so you, it's, been, it's been a road to get to Austin. You have played a number of other festivals. Tell us a little bit about where the, the film has, has been and what you've seen so far. Yeah, I mean, in that sense, we, we had like a, like a fairy tale, I would say. We, we opened in, uh, in Toronto, at Toronto Film Festival, the, um, the weekend. It did really great, actually. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah, we sold the film to the US, to Canada, 
England, Australia, New Zealand, now I mean France, Belgium, blah, 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 blah. so it's, <laughs> it's like uh, it's doing great in that sense and also after that we also got the Berlinale in Germany. Yeah, it's a fantastic festival and we open on Friday, uh, I mean the first weekend and also we had a venue of 700 people, wow. 720 seats. Wow packed completely you know awesome. and then yeah and and the audience was great they liked the film so much so it was like a fantastic experience and now i'm here yeah. which is also like a, <laughs> a great city and yeah. a great festival i was actually going to ask you how i mean after all these other festivals but then to find out that you were going to have your u.s premiere at south by southwest how did that feel i was really anxious in the beginning because that's my first um US, that's a US premiere, and that's the first time I screened a film actually in the US. I've been in the US before, but come with a film, it's different. And actually, I, I'm, I was really surprised how the young people, my potential audience, yeah. reacted positively to the film so far. So we are having great review, we, people are interested, and, and also, it's quite weird. I mean, people must imagine that I come from Kinshasa, which is really, really far from here. Mm -hmm. So you write a story that you try to have being authentic and being close to what you know, and finally, it does interest the rest of the world. I mean, some other yeah. people in the world. So it's a great experience. I enjoy it very much. Well, congratulations. Um, if people aren't here at the festival but would like to learn more about the film or about your work, is there a website or somewhere they can go? Or I mean, the website is like developing, but I think the best thing is to go on the website of my of the U.S. distributor, Music okay. Box. Okay? okay, so you have a lot of information on the film and a little bit on me also, okay. and uh, and we are finishing the website of the film, so you'll have more information about me and the film also. Great. Well, thank you so much, Joe, and thank you. Stay tuned for more from South by Southwest 2011.